Hi, I'm Tom Kimball. And I'm Tracy Kimball. Welcome to MS Learn Online. Whether and when to have children is one of the most important and exciting decisions we make in our adult lives. That decision is made much more complicated when one or both partners has MS. It's an issue that's on the mind of our medical correspondent, Kate Milliken. She had an opportunity to speak with Dr. Dessa Sadovnik, one of the leading experts in the area of family planning and genetics for people with MS. The whole world of reproducing, having a child and having MS is something that's especially pertinent to me because I hope to have a child. I'm in my mid-30s and I have MS. So you have been doing a lot of work with people on this subject on what you would recommend for them um, in terms of moving forward with the idea of potential family planning. So tell me a little bit about your work. Well, what we're interested in doing is pu we're putting together a project that's called the Multiple Sclerosis North American Pregnancy Project. And what we're looking at at this stage is putting together information so that when someone asks a question such as you just asked, I'm not going to make the decision for you. But the idea is to provide you and your partner with the best information that's relevant for you in various topics so that you can make your own decisions based on valid information. Let's talk about some of the factors that you will uh, be addressing. Okay, well some of the factors include, let's start in the beginning, the whole area of conception. Many people with MS have problems with sexual functioning. They don't bring that forward often and this is an issue in trying to conceive a child. Um, if you don't want to have a child, issues of birth control come up. What birth control methods are the best for someone who has MS? Um, you have to make sure that you realize that oral contraceptives can sometimes interact with anti antibiotics that are given for frequently bladder infections. So that can reduce the risk of the oral contraceptive. You also have to think about both parents. You're a young female, but you have to remember that there are males out there who want to father pregnancies, and many of the issues we have to think about are relevant for males as well. We also have to realize there are women out there who have secondary progressive MS and even primary progressive MS who may want to have children. They have different issues they have to consider. And then of course you have the planned pregnancy versus the unplanned pregnancy. But taking all that together, the various areas that I think you have to discuss in your decision making process include the following. They include sexual functioning because of course you have to mate. mate. It includes discussions on the effect of MS on pregnancy and pregnancy management. And this includes topics such as delivery, topics of pregnancy-related uh, symptoms. Are they really MS symptoms? Are they pregnancy-related? The management of the pregnancy. The fact that in most cases, just because a woman has MS, she's not a high-risk pregnancy. You know, these are all issues that have to be discussed. Also in the pregnancy realm, obviously, in the, in the third trimester of having most people come out symptom-free and then being doubly susceptible to an episode after well, pregnancy. That, again, is something that has to be really researched properly because what we don't really know about that research is most of it is based on retrospective data. There, most of it is based on recall and also we don't usually know what the woman's course was like prior to becoming pregnant. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to say that this is a true 100% fact for all women. And one of the things we're hoping to do is do some prospective work where we're able to take what the woman's course was like before pregnancy, follow her through pregnancy, after delivery, and see if there's a correlation there. Also, whether we're talking about true relapses or pseudo-relapses is something that has to be looked at. And that's actually the second major heading of our reproductive counseling because I said before that the first topic was the effect of MS on pregnancy and the second topic of course is the effect of pregnancy on MS. And this of course is re relevant only to females but we really need more information on this both the short-term effects and the long-term effects. 
Another factor I have to believe that you deal with is telling women who have MS whether or not there's a genetic component that they might be sending down to their child. Both women and men, we also discuss the genetic component because this is relevant for both males and females. We also discuss, um, when I go back to the relapse rates, again, everybody focuses on females, but what about the male? What about the male who has MS? What about when his wife is pregnant and she needs much more help? What about after delivery when she's nursing, when busy with the baby and sleep's disrupted? Do the men have relapses as well? In, I'm sorry, in light of the studies that you actually, do, or the programs and the people you come into contact with, what is the, I, I understand it's a personal decision, but how many people, women and men, who go through your program or talk to you or think about these factors actually pull out of the idea of having a child? It's a very interesting answer. I can't give you a set number, but what I can say is after doing a lot of these reproductive counseling sessions, there, and I don't make the decision, the couple makes the decision. I have been surprised how often people who I feel really, my gut feeling is they should go ahead, back out because they don't want any risks, and other people who probably have so many factors against them decide and go ahead. And one concern is cognitive functioning. What you have to be aware of as well is, th does the person have the cognitive ability to make the informed decision? So this is something else that has to come up, an assessment of that in reproductive counseling. Um, other factors have to do with therapies. There are three types of therapies you have to consider. There are the symptom-specific therapies, the um, relapse specific therapies and of course the disease modifying therapies and this is relevant for both men and women. Ideally you should not be on a therapy at the time of conception. Same true for men and for women. So the question comes up we don't know enough about these therapies to know are any of them safe, really safe during pregnancy? Are any of them safe enough maybe to, for a woman to resume later on in a pregnancy? What about after delivery and breastfeeding? What about for the male? We always think about the woman, but you forget that male are always forming new sperm. What about the male? Should he be in a washout period if he's trying to father a pregnancy? Should he freeze his sperm? I mean, these are all issues that you have to discuss with the patients, and I think these are all very relevant. Rele relevant. And a lot of people's decisions often are related to disease-modifying therapies and how much the person actually feels that being on that therapy is keeping them well or protected. We know that there's no therapy that is known to be the cure for MS, but different people have different perspectives. Um, when you think about planning a pregnancy, you often think, okay, nine months pregnancy, then you think of the three month postpartum because that's when, quote, the relapses tend to happen. Um, some people recognize a washout period before, some people don't. But say you're going into a planned pregnancy and say you're on um, a disease-modifying therapy, and these are real examples we have. All right, you're thinking about it with your partner, and you're okay with your three-month washout if you're a female, for example, or if you're a male, it's really both ways. But say where you're a female, you're okay with your three-month washout, which is an arbitrary figure. Um, we don't know for sure if that's what you need, but that's what we go by right now. You're okay with your washout period. You're okay with your nine months of pregnancy. Then you make a decision, are you going to breastfeed or are you going to go back on therapy after delivery? So you're talking about a 12-month period and you know in your mind you say, well, you know, as a female, so if I'm off the medication for those 12 months, it's not that long. What about the real world? And I had the situation just recently come up. Uh, this couple had been trying to get pregnant for about a year and a half. The woman had been off her medication now for a year and a half. And she's starting to have some more problems. So the very real life question comes up. Does she stay off the medication? Does she continue to try to get pregnant and see what happens? Does she go back on the medication? take her risks that if she does get pregnant, you know, she'll wean off it once she finds out she's pregnant. Again, we don't have precise data to know the safety of 
conceiving on the medication, but that's her other option. And her third option is go back on the medication and give up all hope of having a child. So these are the type of real life situations that come up and in the reproductive counseling, what we're trying to do with the website as well is we're trying to put this information out there so that healthcare professionals, when they're dealing with their patients, can dis know what factors to discuss knowing the people in front of them and try to raise issues that should be discussed so people can make an informed decision. And I think it's very important, you know, you've brought up in such a great way uh, the importance of making an informed decision and also the importance of a personal choice. And it obviously is not, not an easy one, so I really appreciate you. The other thing I think it's very important for people who are planning a pregnancy, um, it's really important to discuss with them, is very often people have this idealized idea that you worry about the pregnancy, you worry about having the baby, and then, but you focus on having this little baby. And what they have to realize is that parenting is not just having a newborn, it's a life commitment. That's right. And one of the things that we also bring up with couples to discuss is how would you cope if there was a problem and your partner with MS could not participate in the typical ways that you would expect that parent to participate? Or there's always the unknown, you know, something can happen to the other partner. Other things besides MS can come into the family. Right, and these are issues that you would have even yeah. without MS. And talk about sort of reevaluating, though, your role as a parent and as a spouse in terms of relationships, talking about focusing more on what you can do at different stages rather than on everything what you cannot do. And I think that that's very important. Dr. Sadovnik gives us lots to think about regarding family planning. What stood out for me is how important it is to be proactive, getting as much good information as possible, and making the decision that's right for your family. We'd like to thank Kate and Dr. Sadovnik for this candid and insightful interview. And thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon.